So, you want me to tell you something about myself? Is that it? Well, okay. Came here prepared, no problem. I, I like long walks on the beach. I like kittens. I love the sound of the water when it hits the ground. The rain going down, splashing on the pavement is absolutely gorgeous. I love the moonlight, the long walks in the moonlight, and just the whole interplay of the shadows and the dark and the light and the dark, the way that dust touches the edge. Probably you wouldn't say those sort of answers if you got that question in, in an interview situation, right? <laughs> Probably not. You wouldn't go to your interviewer and talk about that sort of thing. Because those, those things are for dating. When you're on a date, that's what you talk about, right? That's the sort of things you think about. You know, long walks in the business. And yet, a business interview is kind of like a date, isn't it? Kind of like a date. You're going there, and there's some things just like on a date you have to be aware of. So to tell me something about your question is actually a dating question. And if you approach it that way, it makes more sense it's easier to answer. Well, I struggled for years with a question about, tell me about yourself. It was one of those questions I just hoped they wouldn't ask me. You ever go to an interview and you hope they wouldn't ask you certain questions? And they did. And then you kind of stumbled through them as best you could. Didn't know what to do about it. Until finally, I read this article recently by Skip Freeman. And he's talking about this, the importance of tell me about yourself question and the right answer to give. And he says you can give an answer in one minute. One minute. And you have to focus on three things. Now if you don't hit all three things, they're going to ding you. It's like the gong show. You're going to go, gong! And that's going to be it. But if you do hit all three things, you hit the ground running, and you really solidly answer that question. Tell me about yourself. So I was looking at this article. It's like Skip was talking to me and said, hey Tim, here's what you need to do. Here's what it's all about. I said, Skip, thanks for the advice. I'm going to pass it on to everybody I know. So I want to share with you Skip Freeman's thoughts about how you can answer the tell you about yourself question so you have no more problems with it. Start out with the basic, what the right start of it is, and then the second part. How the first and the second part come together, the second part of the answer. Move all the way on to the third part of the answer. Everything kind of sums up. And as always, just like in baseball, if you miss, if you're going around the base and you miss one of them, then you can get tagged out. So you have to hit all three. The first thing is, one of those things, if you don't make it in your interview, if you don't start this way, then you're already off on a bad foot. You'll notice, because you go through and you start to answer and tell me about yourself why you look at the interview and they go like, start writing something down. And that's when you'll know you, you didn't quite get that first part right. If you hit the first part right, then you get into it. Then you get into it, it's flowing, things are going, things are going fine, you get that confidence up. Not only confidence in you, but the interviewer gets confidence in you. And the first part of the answer, the first 20 second part you want to give of the answer to tell me about yourself is about your career history. Your career history. Just 20 seconds. But it's just like on a date. There you are, sitting there at the date. You've got this stranger sitting across from you. With all sorts of thoughts are going through your mind. You're thinking, any axe workers in your family? <laughs> any psychological issues I should know about here? Any deep, dark problems are going to come out somewhere later down the line you really don't want to get into? I got a date. You want to find out who that other person is. So just like on a date, with the interviewer. You want to find out, okay, who are you? That's their question. All I want to know is you're stable, you're not crazy, no axe murderers, no history of business fraud, no huge embezzlement cases, hopefully not a criminal. That's what they want to know. Just 20 seconds. So you talk about something like, maybe say 10 years at Deloitte as a secretary. Before that, I was eight years at Arthur Anderson. I spent two years uh, looking around, exploring job possibilities. Between that and hiatus, getting things ready. Something very quick like that gives you career history. So, that's the first step. Career history. Because you want to end the mystery, give them your history. End the mystery, give them your history. So that's all about career history. 
The second part of the question is something that if you hear, it's sort of like you're stumbling. You ever been walking down the street and suddenly you're walking along, things are good, you're feeling something, and you feel that stumble? <laughs> and you hope nobody notices it? And you know everybody did. <laughs> they aren't pointing at you, but you know there's somebody there laughing. You're walking down, you hear something, about that one. <laughs> Same thing in a job interview. You're going along great, you've been in career history. You stumble on that second part, boom, that's it, right there. But if you nail that second part, if you start giving them what they want, you start understanding what they want to answer that question, tell me about yourself, then you're getting in deeper in their good graces. All the hard questions probably haven't started yet. It's quite a common question, tell me about yourself at the beginning. So, at least they're getting a good impression. And you want to understand the second part, it's the next 20 seconds, then you start to go up classes. And the second part is all about your career accomplishment. Your career accomplishment. Again, think of a day. You're going through a day, things are going pretty well. No axe murders, no psychological issues, no traumas, no deep dark issues. You're thinking, okay, fine. So your next question is, Why should I bother with you? Why should I bother with you? I mean, let's face it, you're attractive, got a lot of possibilities. Why this one here? In accounting, they call it opportunity cost, which means if you spend time in one thing, you can't spend time in something else. So why bother? What's so great about that person sitting across the table? Why should you even spend the time going through this meal? Why should you get your food, you know, get it to go, and boom, you're out of there. Hey, I got my free meal, I'm out of here, it's all right. So that's the thing. So what you want to do, skip it. Do you want to hype the hit? Talk about your career accomplishment. You only got 20 seconds, but what career accomplishment do you have that nails down all the details of all the things they're looking for in that job? So that job would be a whole bunch of stuff, the job descriptions, all that sort of stuff. And there's something they're, you know, they're looking for. All I want to hear from you is that you got it, that that's you. So you hype the hit. You hype the hit you've got, your greatest career thing you've done. So if you're going through and you're doing your secretary, maybe you did a lot of meeting planning. So you say, well, I put this meeting together, national meeting for partner principals and directors. Uh, we had catering brought in. It was an overcharge of $1,000. I was able to track down and get removed. Uh, there was numerous people involved. Uh, afterwards, we did a follow-up and understood what we were doing better. And then I sent out the, and collected all the information and follow-up and just hyped the hit. Just one greatest hit you had. A mistake a lot of people make is they just want to keep going and going and going and don't want to stop. Remember, it's only got a minute. You only got 20 seconds for this. But just like on a date, you're sitting across, you're saying, why should I bother? That's all they want to know. Why should they bother? They don't need to know about all the greatest things you've done. All that stuff will come later in the interview. Most likely, much later. Don't get into that. Don't worry about it. But just hike the hit. Let them know why should bother. Now, things are going pretty good, right? You're going through, you're giving them your, your career history, you got your career accomplishment, and everything's going fine. And many people will have challenges with those, but most people will have a challenge with the last part of the answer. And not knowing that last part of the answer and how to answer that question correctly is something that is going to really create long term issues. Because it's sort of like when you're going through and you see somebody and they're about ready to cross the tape <laughs> and you see them stumble <laughs> and they're falling. Maybe you can even see it in the, in the recruiter's face. They're looking at you and saying, oh. <laughs> But you didn't nail it because you didn't get that last part. So you got to get the last part. Once you get the last part, then you're done. you got your one minute answer done. Your sweats, you can start drying the sweat. You've got an available impression. They're getting involved because they're interested in what you're saying. Everything starts going really smooth. The last part, the skip free to reveal, is so important. It's about your career move. 
your career move. Now you might be thinking, Tim, what do you mean career move? I just want to have a job. I don't want to be moving anywhere. I don't want to be leaving. I want to hear I'm going on to a different job now. Well, true. But think of it like a date. You're sitting there, the date's going well, you've got no axe murders, no, cy no cycles, good, good. I can bother with you, you've got some good stuff going on, all right, cool. Now you're thinking, how long is this relationship going to last? <laughs> Are we talking a day here? Two days? A week? Two weeks? A month? How long are we really talking about? And that's what the career move is all about. It's all about understanding how long those things are going to last. So you're talking about your career move. You want to talk about how you're moving on up. You're moving on up. You're moving on up in the company. Boy, five years from now, things are going to be humming. Things are going to be going great. Things are going to be fantastic. They're going to just love all the great productive things you're doing. Maybe talk about how you're going to take some of the productive things you're doing at your old job and bring them into the new job. So. Five years, maybe I'm going to be planning more PPD meetings. I'm going to start doing more of national branching out and adapt some of the successful things I've been doing at my previous job and bring them into here and start building them into the base. I'll start sharing the knowledge that I've got from the experience I have with the other secretaries so we can start to develop and build best practices for doing some of these common activities. We're doing. Something like that. The idea being, if you've got this career move, you've got some career plan. It's just like in a date, you're thinking, okay. Great stuff, love you, you're fabulous, wonderful, beautiful, pretty, but how long is going to last? Well, what's really between us here? You know, are we talking about something short or are we talking about a longer term thing? And if they really like what's going on, you think they want to have a longer term thing. You know? No strength attached, but a longer term thing. Just like on a date, you can drop them at any time. That's what business is for, too. But at least you'll get all the sense of you're going to be around here for a long term. So that's what they really want to know. They've got something solid, long term, it's going to be around, not going to just jump on the next pretty face they find. They're going to keep going. So, to wrap things up, all the things talking about when you're going to a business interview, it's just like being on a date. First thing you want to do is you want to make sure you go out there that you end the mystery, give your history, because they don't know you. So give you a career history. In the mystery, give your history. The next thing is to make sure that you give your career accomplishment. Really, hype the hit. What great thing you have, hype the hit. Make them know that you did some really wonderful things out there. And then finally, the third thing to wrap it all up is about that career move. How you're moving on up. You're in this for the long run. You're talking about a deep personal bond here. You can see all the all the beautiful birds and singing and the flowers are blowing and everything's going great between you and the recruiter and it's just going to be a long-term relationship. That's what you're looking at. That's where you're going. So just remember, when you go to that business interview and they ask you that critical question, tell me about yourself. Be yourself. Whatever you do, be dateable. So I think the, the speech is very well structured. You have the beginning and then you have the three main points and then in the end you wrap it up. So that helped me to take my notes. <laughs> and also I like that how you actually compare two different uh, situations that looks quite irrelevant, seems like it's completely different, but actually you make the connection between the dating and office interview. I think that's great because you keep the, the speech more fun and more enjoyable because if you are worried about office interview, it's very serious, right? It's your job. But when you're talking about the dating, and then you start just smiling, because yeah, you see, you realize, yeah, yeah, it's actually a very similar situation. Instead of talking to a girl or a handsome boy, man, I'm talking to this group of people I may work with in the future. So I think that's that's a great catch, yeah. And also, I, I like that how you actually go into details of each point. Make me feel like I'm looking through this one minute talk through a big magnified glasses. So you digest every detail very clear and make it very convincing. And I'm, I'm, I'm com completely convinced that that would be the thing I'm going to do next time when I'm in this situation. And also I like how you, um, the way that you, you didn't make the points directly, it's not the first 
sentence of that portion of the speaking, you actually sort of uh, trying to get audience to think what is I, I need to be talking because you don't tell what is need to be t speak but you actually say this is the consequence you don't do that duty right and this may happen if you don't do this so I was trying to think what it is what what is it what is it what is why don't you just say it and but when when you finally say it I say yes that's right so it, it so it actually sort of uh, Make a quite a remarkable mark in my in my mind, so I remember those points very clear. So I think that that's that's job well done, very nice. Uh, things I, I probably would like to improve is that I do feel sometimes the there's not really nice pause. It's just the thing just keep flowing and flowing, and flowing, and maybe a little little bit of uh, vocal variety would be even better. And also, I think another thing to make it even more interesting is that you actually sort of uh, maybe to describe that. What do you feel like when you are actually sitting in the office? You are doing an interview. To feel like uh, we are there with you. So that would be uh, my comments. Tim, I really enjoyed this speech, and as it happens, my brother-in-law uh, was recently let go by the city, and he is frantically looking for a job. So I'm going to ask him to watch this video. I thought you had some great, great information. I liked the setup. Um, you said in an interview situation, I would suggest you change that to a job interview situation because I didn't know what kind of interview television or personal. Also, you talk about the mini story, and that would have been a great thing for a mini story when the blonde woman looked across at me slightly bored and asked me the question mm -hmm. that I dread. So we kind of don't know what it is. I would suggest that. I absolutely loved End the Mystery, Give Them Your History. I thought that was great. I would suggest for point two, don't quit until you hype the hit. And then see if you can come up with a third thing. Uh, another suggestion I have is um, you, you said something when, uh, um, when they're thinking, they're looking at you and they're thinking, well, you're attractive. I would have added, but I've seen better. Or, or there are other fish in the sea or something just to to add a little humor to that. Uh, the third point I thought seemed to go on, and like Christina, I thought you, there was a little too much teasing. I too wanted to smack you and make you tell me whatever it was you were, you were hinting at. Perhaps that's good because it did make us frantic. On the other hand, it also made me a little annoyed. Jen, what a phenomenal speech. The most difficult question, great title. First thing I love, I love about your speech was the humor. It started right off with some humorous uh, sentences that got me laughing and that definitely got me connected to the speech. You were talking about an article that you read by Tim Friedman and you mentioned his name several times in the speech. That was a good reminder of him. You focused on three things. Using that number three is always a good number to use, number three. You, you did a great job with the push-pull. You talk, you used good metaphors. One of them was playing baseball and going around the bases. You have to touch every base before you get the home run. I thought that was a great metaphor to use. Uh, you repeated your career history many times just to really make a point. You were going back and forth between being in a job interview and being on a date, and I liked that. That created some interesting variety. In the mystery, give them your history. I believe you repeated that several times, just really driving that home again. You repeated, tell me about yourself. You repeated that a few times. Good I found some of the pausing was good. You did utilize pausing in some parts very effectively. Hike the hit. That was a good kind of a quote unquote message. You mentioned Skip Friedman a few times. Built that. Oh, and then I really liked uh, when you started to get into your personal career when you were talking about all of the skills that you have with your meaning planning and that was really interesting to me what you really skilled guy you've got tons of skills you could be very valuable that's right just tell them what you can do for them and build best practices 
and build long-term relationships. So that was really useful. In terms of where you could use some improvement, I would have liked to see a description of Skip Friedman. Was he old, young, wise? I would have loved to see a description of the date that he were on. What did the date look like? Could have been male, female, <laughs> whatever. Um, sometimes you were speaking so fast that you actually left the last word off of some of your sentences. Like you said, I was walking along and hit that stove. I don't stove. And then you stumble. Well, what's a stove? So you were going so fast, so when you listen to the tape, you'll notice that. When you were switching back and forth from the date and the interview, it would have been good to change locations of where you were standing. When you're on the date, stand here. When you're on the job interview, stand here. Because one time you were talking about being on the date, and I thought you were on the interview. I got kind of lost. Uh, describe the interviewer. You said really fast, I sent out the and collected all the data. Can I go a little longer since we're having enough people here? I sent out the, the word kind of fizzled into space, and I collected the data. And then you use the word cuz, is that a word, cuz? Or can you say half word? Yeah, or is it because? Use the word cuz, cuz I'm ready to cross the tape, you said, cuz I'm ready to cross, maybe that's okay. Moving on up at the company PDP meetings. I don't know what PDP is. You abbreviated something. I don't know what that means. And just one time, just because I'm being, being persnickety, one time you pushed up on your glasses. 